Today's objectives will be to identify, name, and draw points, lines, segments, rays, and planes, and to apply basic facts about points, lines, and planes. Here is a list of the vocab we will cover today. Find these on your vocab charts so that you can fill them out as you watch the video. All of these figures that we are talking about today are what we call undefined terms. We say that they're undefined because they uh, have no size, shape, or definition. So um, we'll start with point lines and planes, which we say are the building blocks of geometry. In this chart, you'll see that we have a point. Uh, when we think about a point, we want to remember that it has no size um, and it has no shape. So we can't say that it is an inch wide. Um, a point simply gives location. If we look at how we name a point, we use a capital letter. So we can call it point P. In a picture, you'll see a dot representing that point with a letter by it naming that point. When we have two points, we have what's called a line. A line has no thickness and extends forever. In our diagrams or in our pictures, we will use arrows to show that that line will continue forever in both directions. Uh, two points define a plane, so you'll always see two dots with the letters defining them. We can name a plane in numerous ways. If we want to call this line L, we'll use a lowercase cursive letter. We can also name it by the two points, letter X and the letter Y, representing points X and Y, with a line above them to say that this is line XY or line YX. If we have three points, we can define what is called a plane. A plane is a flat surface that has no thickness and extends forever. To draw a plane, we use what we call a parallelogram, kind of like a rectangle tilted on its side. Just like a line, you can name a plane with three points. This could be plane ABC because it contains those three points in the plane, or we can name it with a lower or an uppercase capital letter. So this could also be plane R. Points that lie on the same plane or the same line are considered to be collinear. If you think about the word collinear, you see that it starts with co. Other words that start with co might be like a co-worker, someone you work with, or a co-pilot would be someone that flies together. So that co refers to the part that says same. So in this picture, you'll see that there are three points that are collinear. The three points on the same line are points K, L, and M. We also have coplanar. Notice that co, meaning shared, means that those points are all on the same plane. So for example, if we looked at this diagram and we looked for points that were on the same plane, we'd first have to find a plane. Remember that we said a plane was defined by a uh, parallelogram. If you see this parallelogram, we ask ourselves what four points, or any, are on that same plane. We'll see that B is here, C is here, D is there, and A are all on the same plane. If we wanted to name three lines, we could come up with numerous answers, but we said that a, we see no lowercase cursive letters, so we can't use that way of naming a line, but we'll have to use points. We need two points to name a line, so you could use a combination of, of letters. This line contains point A and point E, so I could call it line AE. I could also name this line that has B and E, or CE, or line DE would be another choice. Now you try the next problem. This contains um, a few planes. Look for one or two of them. Here's a possible answer. Okay, now we'll move on to some other figures. Let's talk about segments, endpoints, rays, and opposite rays. These figures are still named by our points and lines, but a segment, if you notice how the picture changes, has no arrows. 
So a segment ends on both sides. So we can measure a segment and its length. It does have a length. We can still name this segment by our two points A and B. But notice since there's no arrows in the picture, when we name a segment, we just use a bar on the top rather than a line with arrows. An endpoint would be the ends of our segment where the line stops. Those are just named like they are points. Endpoints are also points. A ray is much like a line except that it only goes in one direction forever. Notice that in this picture it stops at R, so R is what we called an endpoint. The ray goes through S in that direction forever. We always name our rays starting with the endpoint and then the other letter or the other point that it goes through after. Notice that since it only goes in one direction, we put one arrow with our symbol. Opposite rays would be two rays starting in the same place and going in opposite directions. So this is ray EG that goes to the right forever and ray EF goes to the left forever going in opposite directions. Notice what those two rays create. Opposite rays can also create a line FG. Here are a few examples of how we might draw our segments and rays. A segment with endpoints M and N would stop on two sides. Opposite rays with the common endpoint T would both start at T and go in opposite directions. You try this one. Start by creating a ray with an endpoint M. If it contains N, we put a point N on that ray as well. A postulate is something that is accepted as true. We don't have to prove it to use that statement in the future. You'll see postulates and theorems throughout the rest of this class. Here we have three postulates that help us learn about points, lines, and planes. Anytime you see two points, there will be exactly one line passing through them, never more than one. Anytime you see three points that are not on the same line, there is exactly one plane containing all three. If you have two points that lie in a plane, then the line containing those points also lies in that plane. Now let's look at some examples. If we wanted to name a line that passes through two points, even though you see numerous things in the picture, the line is XY. In our next example, we are trying to name a plane that contains three non-collinear points. Remember, non-collinear means not on the same line. Since two points will always be on the same line, the third makes the set non-collinear. Those three points are all inside plane R, so to name that plane, we could either call it name or plane R, or we can name it by the points in the plane. Here are two more postulates we want to learn for today. If two lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one point, never two. Lines can't curve, so they can only intersect once. If two planes intersect, then they intersect in exactly one line. We'll look at some examples of this tomorrow. When we're drawing our pictures, we can use a dashed line to show the hidden parts of any figure that we're drawing. A dashed line indicates that part of the figure is not seen. For example, if we want to sketch two lines intersecting in exactly one point, remember to show with that we have lines, we want to use arrows, and to show that they intersected, we'll draw a dot in the middle to represent the one point. To show a figure, to show a line that lies in a plane, <clears throat> we'll draw a plane. To show that it lies inside the plane, we put both arrows on the actual plane itself. Last one, sketch a figure that shows two lines intersecting in one point in a plane, but only one of the lines lies in the plane. Our planes always look the same. We use a Quadra or a parallelogram to show that one line is in the plane we draw all of it inside the parallelogram they have to intersect 
at one point, and one of the lines cannot lie in the plane. Like we said before, use a dotted line to show that it's beneath the plane, and show that this one is above the plane by making it solid. Also notice that the two arrows are both outside the plane to show that that line itself is not actually contained in the plane. That's what we have today for points, lines, and planes. We'll do some practice in class. I'll see you soon.